Hello, thank you for coming to my virtual APS March meeting talk. My name is Tom Wong from Creighton U University, and I'll be talking about some work that came out last year in PRA on isolated vertices in continuous time quantum walks on dynamic graphs. So just to give you an overview, I'll start by explaining what a continuous time quantum walk is and describe some of, of its applications in quantum computing. Then I'll talk about the fact that, uh, that quantum walks are universal for quantum computing, meaning you can convert any quantum circuit into a quantum walk and vice versa. After that, I'll talk about how to implement quantum gates using quantum walks on something called uh, dynamic graphs, which were introduced by Herman and Humboldt last year. And finally, I'll introduce my work, which, is, which are ways to simplify these dynamic graphs by using isolated vertices that are loopless. And this will become more clear as we go through. All right, so let's get started. So a continuous time quantum walk is just quantum mechanics uh, where the particle is confined to a lattice or a graph. So here's an example of an optical lattice where the particle is trapped at the potential wells and it can move around to adjacent vertices. So if you want to depict this as a graph of vertices and edges, you might have something that looks like that, like a square grid or square lattice. And you could walk on any graph, so something like a complex network would also be fine. So this is all a, a, a quantum walk is, just quantum mechanics on these types of structures. And so since it's a quantum particle, it exists in a superposition over the n vertices of the graph. And so in general, state is some amplitude at vertex 0 plus some amplitude at vertex 1 and so forth in superposition, and this evolves, since it's quantum mechanics, by Schrodinger's equation, which is just that, where I've set h bar equal to 1. So that's it. It's just quantum mechanics, Schrodinger's equation, except you're confined onto a lattice or a graph. So what Hamiltonian do we use for a lattice or a graph? Well, the Hamiltonian is the adjacency matrix of the graph. So let me give you an example. So here's a, ver a graph with four vertices, 0, 1, 2, 3, and the adjacency matrix is a 4 by 4 matrix that looks like that. And what you have is you have a zero uh, if a vertex is not adjacent to another vertex, and you have a one if uh, a vertex is adjacent to the other vertex. So just for example, if we look at the first row here, vertex zero is not adjacent to itself. Vertex zero is adjacent to one, so there's a one there. Vertex zero is not adjacent to vertex two, and vertex zero is not adjacent to vertex three and so forth, and this is vertex 1's connections and so forth. And so, again, in general, it's an n by n matrix. You have a 1 if vertices are adjacent and 0 otherwise. So the JCC matrix encodes all the pairs of vertices and whether or not there's an edge. Physically, this uh, arises from different systems. So if the graph is regular, then the JCC matrix is equivalent to uh, uh, Laplace's operator, which is the kinetic energy term in the Hamiltonian. Uh, if the graph is regular or irregular, it doesn't matter, uh, then if you have a spin chain on that graph with poly x and y interactions, then this uh, matrix arises again in the Hamiltonian naturally. So there are physical systems corresponding to this. Some of the applications of continuous time quantum walks in quantum computing include uh, uh, trying to move across a graph, say, from one side to another. So Childs, in 2002, with collaborators, developed a graph where a continuous time quantum walk could traverse this graph exponentially faster than a classical random walk could. Algorithmically, it's been applied to searching, and there's been a lot of work, starting with Childs and Goldstone in 2004. There's been a lot of work on perfect state transfer, how to take um, probability at one amplitude and move it to another, sorry, at one vertex and move it to another vertex. Um, you can also evaluate Boolean formulas using continuous time quantum walks. And more recently, there's been some work on image segmentation. All right, so quantum walks are universal for quantum computing, meaning you can take any quantum circuit, might be what's more familiar to people, and convert it to a quantum walk and vice versa. So the first demonstration of this was by Andrew Childs in 2009, who used a scattering approach. And you don't have to understand this graph, but the idea is the particle starts here on the left and it walks along this graph, and as it does that and it interacts with these different structures, you're able to implement quantum gates. So this particular picture is from Child's paper, and it's a Hadamard matrix on the a second qubit, followed by a C naught between those two qubits. So you don't have to understand this. The idea is just that you know that you can go from a quantum walk to quantum gates and so forth. Another way to do this by Underwood and Fader in 2010 was uh, using a dual rail encoding. So again, here you have this graph that you walk on, 
And this graph actually changes with time. So you'll walk with some edges for some time and then you'll switch and you'll walk with some different set of edges for another time. And this particular picture is the phase gate or the square root of Z gate. So you don't have to understand this again, it's just to show that there's a relationship between circuits and graphs. So a recent result from last year by Herman and Humble is to use a dynamic graph utilizing results from perfect state transfer. So this is what my work is gonna be based on, so I'm gonna talk about this in a little bit more detail. So let's do an example together. Let's look at the poly gate, the poly Y gate. So the Y gate acting on a qubit that's in some amplitude times zero plus some amplitude times one does the following. So if you act on it by Y, the zero becomes I times one and the one becomes negative I times zero. So you see that zero becomes one and one becomes zero and then they get a relative phase between the two. And so just to rewrite that, that's what it looks like. So basically zero and one swap and then the, you get a, a phase between the two. So Herman and Hummel gave the following dynamic graph to, that implements this. So here, treat 0, 0, 0 as 0, and 0, 0, 1 as 1. So here's 0 and 1, and they added some extra um, ancilla vertices. And one result from perfect state transfer shows that if you have a path graph of two vertices like this between 0 and 1, then if you evolve for time pi over 2, what happens is that the amplitude at 0 moves to 1, um, and the amplitude at 1 moves to 0. So you get the swapping that we wanted here, of 0 going to 1 and 1 going to 0. So that's how you swap the amplitudes. And then to get the relative phase between them that you want, what Herman and Humboldt did was they connected 0 in a cycle of length 4, like this, whereas 1 just has a self-loop. And if you evolve from time pi, uh, one result from perfect state transfer says that this uh, the, this cycle here doesn't change at all. So this zero stays the same, and one gets a phase. And so that's how you get the phase between zero and one. And together, you swapped, got the phase, and you implemented a Y gate. So one thing that I want to point out here is that all of the isolated vertices that are by themselves, they all have self-loops. And so this was something that Herman and Humboldt did in their paper all throughout, that isolated vertices have self-loops. And so my work is to ask the question of what happens if the isolated vertices can also be loopless. So if there's no self-loop on isolated vertices. And can we simplify things at all by doing that? So let's go ahead and show how we can do that uh, for the poly Y gate. So there's Herman and Humboldt's implementation. And so one thing I want to point out is that these ancillas were used in order to make this cycle so that zero does not change while one does change by a phase. And so if we have an isolated vertex without a self-loop, we can just make zero isolated, then it won't change, and then one will change with the self-loop. So what we'll get is the following. So we see that it's much simpler. We got rid of all of the ancilla vertices, and again, zero and one swap amplitudes, and then zero doesn't change while one gets a phase, and that together creates a Y gate. Similarly, we can do this with the other poly gates. So the X gate that Herman and Humboldt gave was already very simple, so there's no real improvement there, or no improvement at all. Uh, the Z gate, you do get an improvement, so here's Herman and Humboldt's implementation, and again, you see this cycle of length four that zero is a part of, and this is to make it so that zero doesn't change while you get a phase on one. And so we can eliminate these ancillas by making zero isolated and then one isolated with a self-loop. So one evolves with a phase and zero doesn't. Uh, Herman and Humboldt also implemented this universal set of quantum gates consisting of a Hadamard gate, a T gate, and a C naught gate, and we can simplify those as well. So here's their implementation of a Hadamard gate. So it's a sequence of five graphs, um, and again, there are ancillas, and what we were able to do with isolated vertices without self-loops is simplify this to just three graphs without any ancillas. And so we can see that that's a significant simplification. Similarly, the T-gate, Herman and Humboldt's implementation was this, which utilized six uh, graphs, again with ancillas, and we were able to simplify it to just a single graph like that. And this makes sense, because the T-gate just applies a phase to one. So you apply a phase to one, and then nothing happens to zero. So you can just do that. And finally, c naught. Herman and Humboldt's implementation was already very simple, so there's no improvement there. And so just to summarize, a continuous time quantum walk is just quantum mechanics, Schrodinger's equation, where your particle is confined in space on a graph or a lattice. There are many applications uh, in quantum computing. 
and they're also universal for quantum computing. And in particular with dynamic graphs, we showed that you can simplify them if your isolated vertices can be loopless. And finally, if you want more information, please check out the paper in PRA. Thank you.